Hi, I'm Nicholas Bertner with Working with Nature Permaculture. Today, this episode, we're going to go over what sustainability is and some closed loop systems, which are both natural and man made, which are very few. Um, if we look, well, let me pose a question to you what is sustainability? You know, what comes to your mind when you hear sustainability? Matter of fact, every aid proposal that is out today that, that proposes to do aid work for, for people, it has the word sustainable in it, but look, it's not sustainable at all. Uh, Webster says that the word sustainability actually comes from sustain, which is able to be maintained at a certain rate or level. So. I guess that's a definition. Uh, let me ask you this, if your marriage was sustainable, would that be somewhere you'd want to go? Pro probably not, but we'll stick with sustainability anyhow. Permaculture has its own definition of what sustainability is, and here it is. It is anything or system that creates more energy than it consumes over its own lifetime. So again, that's anything or system that creates more energy than it consumes over its own lifetime. So if we need an example of that, the best example that I can give, and we'll give a, a few others, is going to be the sun. Right? So the sun is, it, it is sustainable. It creates more energy through, um, through fusion. It could be fission. I, I'm getting confused right now. It creates more energy than it than it consumes, and it's consuming its own energy. Uh, let's stick on the sun for a second. That system that we the system that we live in starts with the sun. It is our energy source. So everything that you see around you, everything that you see, is stored up sunlight. So these. Uh, fake plants in the background, the glass, the lights, this couch I'm sitting on, my shirt, all of this is stored up sunlight. Matter of fact, we run our whole system on stored up sunlight. If you travel 300 miles in a vehicle, you are basically burning a quarter acre of stored up sunlight in the form of fossil fuel, fuels, quarter acre of ancient uh, forest. So we are running a system in our, in our current society, in our current paradigm that is using stored up sunlight. And we don't have to do that because that stored up sunlight is a finite resource. And our current way to get energy through the sun is right now, it's, it's almost infinite. So uh, another system that we can think about that is sustainable. There, there are a couple of natural systems out there. If you look at a forest system, every forest in the world, we'll have later episodes that go over uh, the seven uh, layers of the forest, which is a pattern in nature. Every forest is, uh, is sustainable. It creates its own soil, it creates its own life in the soil. It needs no input and it needs no output, and, and it has actually has a lot of outputs. So. That would be a sustainable system. Uh, if we had a prairie, that's another sustainable system. And if you really look at it, both the forest and the prairies, and any natural system, it's not just plants that live within these systems. It is also plants and animals. So the two, the two species are not two different systems. They are one system. If we look at uh, shallow marines, uh, or the de deposition systems, such as marshes, which have the most life on any natural system. It's the most productive life that there is uh, on the world in the world as well. Those systems are are nothing but sustainable. They create life and they create soil. And not very many things on the planet do that. So they're life inoculators as well. We come in at the very end of uh, a sustainable system. And actually, I, it might be better if we use the word regenerative, uh, but I guess you know we'll stick with sustainable. It does sound better. So we have some systems in existence that have been created by man that, that somewhat work with, with nature 
to create a sustainable living system and most of the time it's been the indigenous people of countries who have just through time wisdom have come and figured this out. I'll give you some names of them because we'll, we'll do a whole episode on, on each one and go into detail um, as this particular episode is just talking about what sustainability is and some closed loop systems. So a, a sustainable closed loop system that we have in existence today is something called panage. Uh, it's oftentimes called cork, pork, and chestnut system. It works with uh, forests and pigs. It's a pretty cool uh, system that is uh, sustainable. Another one is a chinampa, which, man, I, I am a big fan of chinampas. It's both a land and aquatic system. The most productive agricultural system ever recorded by man It's called a chinampa. We have another one called Swidden Agriculture. And I'll go ahead and explain uh, what Swidden Agriculture is. Swidden Agriculture is... It is a type of agriculture that man has come up with that started slash and burn. And actually, I, I think it is the first crop rotation system. So currently, what we're doing is we are burning uh, land and we get the nutrients or the lack of nutrients from that land and we then set up our, some type of cropping system on top of the burned soil. So this does, this does have some, some merit to it. They believe that uh, potassium is put into the soil after, after we burn a system down, which this is not the case at all. Actually, what happens is any weedy species is mining for nutrients that are lacking in the soil. Like 98% of potassium is, is uh, uh, disintegrated into the atmosphere after you burn uh, plant material down. So the, the plants that come up that are high in potassium, they are, uh, they are mining it from the soil and from the life under the ground. It's a pretty interesting concept. So uh, Swidden agriculture, if we take a piece of land, right, let's just say this, this, uh, this notebook is our piece of land, say it is uh, 40 acres, and then I come and I put a village here in the middle. And let's say the village has you know one to two thousand people. Well, then what I can do and say say this is prairie or forest, the whole the whole the whole forty acres. We cut a hole here. We put up our village up here at the top. Say right here, we go and we 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 cut down and we burn two acres of land. And then for that year, what we do is we put up our crops for the year. So we grow in whatever climate it is. If we're in the tropics, we'll grow taro and we'll grow sweet potatoes. And, and if we're in the temperate climate, it'll be uh, uh, potatoes, corn, and, and wh whatever crops considering the climate. Right? So that's what we do there. Now the next year, we leave this two acres alone, or we leave it fallow. We leave it alone. We don't touch it. We come over here, and then we cut out another two acres. And we do the same thing that year. And then over here, we'll do another two acres, and over here, we'll do another. And, and So we go around, let's say, you know, 12 or 13 times. So by the 13th year, you're back at the first one, it has regrown. It has become another sustainable system that that is now functioning on its own, which we could cut down again. So that is Swidden Agriculture, which is the originator of Slash and Burn. And if you think about it, this is real crop rotation. It's not using the same piece of land to, ro to, to rotate crops such as like, okay, for a season I'm going to do tomatoes and then a season I'm going to do beans and then a season I'm going to do uh, potatoes. And so the idea behind what our current thinking of crop rotation is, is putting in leguminous species every once in a while that fixes nitrogen in the soil. Well, okay, I see the thinking on that, but imagine taking a piece of land over here I use it for whatever I'm going to grow, and then leaving it alone for five years while I use other pieces of land to grow the same crops. And so when we come back, this has re-mineralized and re-neutralized. Uh, it's put more nutrients in the soil, so it will uh, create better crops at that point. So sustainable systems are systems that create more energy than they consume 
and they will benefit uh, cr the, the creation of soil and the creation of soil life. Um, closed loop systems are sustainable. When we have a permaculture uh, house or a homestead or a farm, uh, we create systems in such a way that everything that the farm or the household needs is created on site and any waste product from any uh, uh, from any item that is in or any element that is in the system it takes its waste product and it's a input for another element that's in the system a good example of this is um, say we're doing a type of gardening uh, it could be any type really let's just say biointensive gardening and we, uh, we harvest whatever we're going to harvest, say, say it's tomatoes, we get the tomatoes off of it, and then we have the stalks left. So we leave those there for a while, but then we, we can cut those, and we can use them for compost. Now that compost creates life, which then again we put back onto the soil to grow next year's crops. Now with that same compost pile, right, so we have an input and an output, it runs by itself, we could take that compost pile and we can put it over into a chicken coop or a chicken tractor and then we can start feeding our chickens from that compost pile. It also produces heat, which the chickens need heat if it's a little bit cooler. And, um, and then the chickens start depositing manure on the compost pile. So it's a win-win situation what ha that, that happens by using different elements together. It's about connecting the different elements. So we'll talk more about that. That's actually a good lead into another episode of how permaculture connects different elements that have functions that uh, support a sustainable regenerative system. So uh, again, thanks for watching. I'll put uh, I'll, I'll have some links in the show notes on this one too. We were talking about a chicken system that works with composting. Um, Jeff Lawton has just put out a video on, a, on about that. I'll put a link to that. It's really cool. Take a watch. And uh, you guys rock. I will talk with you later and see you next episode.